Okay, so if we're comfortable with making the uh, kind of basic surface objects, let's look at how we might be able to explore that geometry. Okay, so any bit of uh, any any surface that we have in Rhino um, gives us a two-dimensional space that we briefly mentioned before that we can move along right using uh, coordinates which are uh, labeled conventionally u and v. So we call this space the parameter space, right? And it is the extents of the space in two directions. So if you think about yourself as, a, as an ant crawling along a surface, right? You can move in two directions. You can move forward and backward. That's one direction. And you can go left and right. Um, once you get to the edge, you, you can't go any further. Otherwise, you'll fall off. Um, so this is the space that we can explore in the U and V directions. Okay, so um, we're going to start with working with points because they're a very simple, uh, simple geometry type. Um, and points are probably very familiar to you. They're, um, they're defined as representing any ordered set of numbers, which we'll call coordinates. Typically, this is in Cartesian space, as a Cartesian coordinate system or an orthographic uh, co uh, coordinate system. And th this may be a kind of like so familiar to you that you don't even think about them existing within a particular coordinate space. Um, but the XYZ uh, space is one specific type of coordinate system. And there are other types, right? So uh, as we're saying, points are very simple. Um, we use them very frequently to create other things like uh, drawing lines or curves through them. Um, and points can be uh, also easily generated from other more complex geometry types. So if you go from points to lines to curves to surfaces, right, you're building up the complexity of those, of that particular geometric type. Points are um, kind of uh, a part of each one of those rungs on the uh, ladder of geometry. And as we were saying before also, that points have to reside within a specific coordinate system, even if we're not kind of actively thinking about them if they exist in the XYZ or world coordinate system, um, they, they, they have to be within a particular coordinate system. Right? And so one of the other types of coordinate systems may be in addition to what we see on the right, which is world space or XYZ coordinate, an XYZ coordinate system. They may also be uh, located in a um, kind of customized coordinate system that's based on a plane, which is what we see on the left, right? a plane that can be oriented in any direction in the XYZ space. Not only can we find points in a kind of uh, world space, but point coordinates can also be found within other geometry types. So um, the kind of convention for world space XYZ is called R3. And if you go from left to right, right, you have uh, fewer and fewer coordinates. So here we see 0.2.4 is the coordinate on the surface in R2 parameter space. Parameter space, again, is the space of our surface. Even though the surface exists within an XYZ coordinate system, right, this local to the surface, we have another space, parameter space, that we can access and explore. Similarly, if we're working with curves, there's a one-dimensional space that's um, identified as T, that allows us to move along a curve, the space of a curve. Okay, so this, it's very important that we understand that uh, points can exist in a global coordinate system or a world coordinate system, X, Y, Z, which is probably what we're very familiar with, and a kind of local coordinate system, which is U, V, relative to a surface, right? This same location, right, has coordinates for x, y, z, as well as u, v, right? That, it might be the exact same point, but we can work within a local space or within a global space of kind of x, y, z um, when we're working with surfaces. Now, that may, might seem a little confusing at first, but it actually is a really uh, useful opportunity for us, right? That means that we can start to do actions relative to surfaces and use just the kind of geometry of the surface to define, let's say, a panel that might look like this, as opposed to trying to figure out how that panel exists actually back in the world. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, in the next exercise is we're going to explore our plane surface object again. But in this, in this case, we're going to look at how we might actually move within that, the space of the surface. Again, we're calling that the parameter space of our surface. All right, so let's bounce back over to Rhino and Grasshopper. And the next file that we're going to look at is 1-1, Exploring Surface Geometry. Okay, and again, um, here's our file. We're going to be looking at how we might be able to move through the space of a surface, right? specifying a specific UV coordinate. All right, so I'm going to delete back to here because we know how to create a plane surface. We just did that. So um, I would encourage you to do the same. So we just have our origin plane, our two sliders, and our plane surface. And I'm going to save as my working file. Okay, so um, um, as a kind of recap, like curves, surfaces can be described both geometrically and numerically, right? We can look at them relative to how they, they appear in the viewport, right, their shape, or we can look at how they're defined numerically. And the numeric description of that nerve surface is understood as the parameter space of that surface. And that's the space that we're going to explore. All right, and we know it's two-dimensional. Uh, for now, and that's as far as we're going to go. So let's take a look at our plane surface, right? We know that it, it, it seems like it, um, the plane surface, the origin is at about 14.5 or 12.5 as our units, right? That's the location of the origin of our surface down here in the lower left-hand corner. And going in uh, two directions, we have a, a width of 7 and a height of about 4. Okay, but let's start to look at how we can access that numerical description of the surface. All right. So coming out of this uh, plane surface object, we have a, one locally defined value and untrimmed surface. All right. Um, so that's the geometrical description, untrimmed surface. Right. So um, let's take a look at how we might access the numerical description. Right. So if we were to go to the math tab, sorry, the params tab under primitive, here we have domain squared, which is the uh, two-dimensional numeric domain. Right. That's one way to describe numerically a two-dimensional space. So let's drop that domain squared object into the canvas. By the way, uh, I'll be calling all of the objects on params, geometry, and primitive tabs. These are containers. They help us store things um, in Grasshopper. Next to those, we have kind of user input objects and special objects for interfacing. And everything else I'm going to call a constructor. Right? And if you want to review that, uh, you know, feel free to look at the uh, intro to Grasshopper webinar that we posted to Vimeo. You can find that on our website, Mode Lab. All right, so if we drop this plane object into this two-dimensional domain, and as I go, I'll be grouping and labeling these things so you know exactly what these are. This is our two-dimensional domain, right? And I'm going to put a panel in the canvas from users, uh, sorry, Pram's input. Let's see what we have coming out. Here we have uh, a description of the new, uh, a numeric description of the surface. It says that U is between 0 and 7.12, and V is between 0 and 3.95. Now, does that seem like it relates to anything we have in our file? Absolutely. In this case, when we make a plane surface, we specify the width and the height, that's going to determine the domain squared. So the width, 0 to 7.12, is going to come directly from the slider here. Same with the height, determining V. 
Now that's only in plain surface uh, situations. We have a different type of surface. We're not guaranteed to get that set of numbers. But for now, we know that this is going to def define those U, the U domain and the V domain respectively if we move these sliders. Okay, great. All right, now there's a start. Okay, so with that, let's see how we can actually find a point on the surface. Right? If we have a two-dimensional space, which is defined by the surface, uh, we can also um, uh, move through that two-dimensional space with a point that's, that has two uh, values, right? Let's say U and V. All right, so for starters, let's go ahead and um, create a point from the vector point tab. This is point X, Y, Z. And here we have, uh, it's asking for the X component, Y, Z, and as a reminder, points always exist within a specific coordinate system. Right. All right. So we're going to leave X, Y, Z, the world X, Y plane as our default coordinate system. And if you zoom out a little bit, you may notice that by default it automatically puts, puts a point at the origin of our, uh, of our Rhino file. Okay. So um, let's now specify X and Y as having a value somewhere in between 0 and 6 and 0 and 4 in my case. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and make a slider, and I'll show you another way to make a slider. Um, it's a little more advanced than having to find it on the menu. If you double-click in the canvas, you can define a slider in the following format. I want my slider uh, slider's minimum value to start at 0. I want its current value to be 2.5, and I want its maximum value to be 7.5. This auto-creates that slider with those values as the extremes and the current value, as well as um, it interprets the rounding that you want for how many decimal points. Okay, so I need two of these, and I'm going to define x and y. Now, if I move these sliders, notice that the point resides within the xy coordinate system. Right? Well, that makes sense because the s input here specifies exactly that, world xy, by default. Right? So this point is in the world, right? We'll call that the world or also XYZ coordinate system. And there was a request for seeing the slider trick one more time. So let's do that. Double click in a canvas and the format that you're going to use is, uh, I'll type this out, but this isn't actually going to work. Min less than current less than max value, right? So if you specify numbers within those uh, less than signs, it will, it will make the slider um, based on those. So I'll try that again. Zero, less than 1.5, less than 6.25, right? That, and then hit enter. That auto generates that slider. And the extremes are specified as the first and last value in that format. 